हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू योर फेवरेट एंड इंडिया मोस्ट एफोर्डेबल लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म फिजिक्स वाला सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव स्टार्टेड द न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज द सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स एंड सेंटर ऑफ मास राइट सो वेर वी हैव सीन सो द लेक्चर नंबर वन द बेसिक्स ऑफ द सेंटर ऑफ मास सो हाउ डू वी फाइंड द सेंटर ऑफ मास फॉर सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स राइट सो फॉर द कंटिन्यूस मास डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और फॉर सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स हाउ डू वी फाइंड द सेंटर ऑफ मास वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इट इन द लास्ट सेशन सो एंड देन वी हैव ऑल्सो गिवेन सम स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मुलाज फॉर द सिमेट्रिकल बॉडीज सो द सेंटर ऑफ मास लाइज एट देर जोमेट्रिकल सेंटर इट सेल्फ सो एंड देन वी गेव सम फॉर्मुलाज फॉर द यूनिफॉर्म रॉड ऑफ लेंथ एल सो वेर इट सेंटर ऑफ मास लाइज एट ए डिस्टेंस ऑफ एल बाई टू सो फॉर सम मोर सिमेट्रिकल बॉडीज we'll see so the center of mass today okay so and then we'll go for the next concept that is the motion of center of mass okay so interesting topic so we'll discuss that as well so i just need your attention for the next one hour guys and at the end of the class so you should prepare your own short notes so for the next one hour avoid all the disturbances around you okay chal so let's get into the topic so the center of mass of some standard symmetrical bodies so already i gave i am giving with the formulas the derivations are not required just remember the formulas here okay so the uniform rod of length l so its center of mass lies at a distance l by 2 so from the origin if you consider this as the origin from the origin so the center of mass lies at a distance of l by 2 so whereas if it is a uniform rod of length l and whose Uh, linear mass density so what is the lambda lambda is a linear mass density lambda is a linear mass density so if this linear mass density varies if this linear mass density varies with respect to the position like for example lambda is equals to some 5x or lambda is equals to some 10x so that means so with respect to position so it's uh lambda is changing so in that case so the center of mass lies at a distance so 2l by 3 so let it be somewhere around here so which is 2l by 3 at a distance 2l by 3 from the origin so we consider the initial point as origin so this is the origin clear guys understood everyone so this is for the uniform rod of length l okay so if its mass density is constant lambda so then this is a l by 2 so if its mass density varying with the position so then that means uh, the linear mass density i am talking about so then 2 l by 3 next so we have uniform circular ring so this is a uniform circular ring of radius r so whose center of mass lies at 2 r by pi at a point 2 r by pi and so the quadrant of uniform ring so if you take the ring so cut it like a quadrant so its center of mass lies at a point 2r by pi comma 2r by pi so this is a center of mass okay the derivations are not required so the uniform semicircular disk so for the disk so its center of mass lies at a distance 4r by 3 pi at a distance 4r by 3 pi right so just remember the formulas guys and then uniform hemispherical shell or halosphere this is a uni uniform hemispherical shell or halosphere so whose uh, center of mass lies at a distance r by 2 okay for uniform solid sphere so if it is a solid sphere so its center of mass lies at a distance 3r by 8 at a distance 3r by 8 so whereas for uniform right triangular sheet so our lamina this is a right triangular lamina so it lies at a distance 2a by b 3 comma 2b by 3 for this one 2a by b sorry 2a by 3 sorry this one is 2a by 3 this is 2a by 3 comma 2b by 3 clear and then so for the halo cone uniform halo cone so from the base so from the base so it lies at a distance h by 3 so h by 3 from base h by 3 from base from the base so whereas 
for uniform solid cone so if it is a solid cone so then its center of mass lies at a distance of h by 4 from the base h by 4 from the base clear understood guys this part Chal. so these are the some standard symmetrical bodies whose center of mass you should remember so uniform rod you can e remember easily and then so uniform circular ring and quadrant of uniform ring uniform semicircular disc and then so uniform hemispherical shell or halosphere and then uniform solid sphere right and then so uniform right angular sheet or lamina so then uniform hollow cone and then uniform solid cone so these you should remember guys clear understood guys Chal. so let's move further so now we have studied so the position of center of mass for the system of particles will be m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus m3 r3 so till mn rn by so m1 plus m2 plus m3 so till mn so now what is the velocity of center of mass so if the center of mass is moving so then so the velocity of center of mass will be so m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus m3 v3 so till m n v n so m3 v3 so till m n v n by so m1 plus m2 plus m3 so till m n right so similarly you can also write the acceleration of center of mass so the acm if acceleration of center of mass is equals to so m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 plus so m4 a4 so till m n v a n so till m n a n so by m1 plus m2 plus m3 so till m n till m n so this is a so position of center of mass and velocity of center of mass and acceleration of center of mass so if the bodies are moving the center of mass also will, will move so what is the velocity of center of mass and acceleration of the center of mass you can find with this clear we'll solve some questions so that you will get the clarity guys Chalo. so let's take the first question so what's the question says so try to understand the given question just a minute so try to understand the given question so there are two blocks of mass masses 10 kg and 4 kg are connected by is a spring of negligible mass and placed on a frictionless horizontal surface so an impulse gives a velocity 14 meter per second to the heavier block in the direction of the lighter block so the velocity of the center of mass so simple question see here so th this is a surface horizontal surface so there are two blocks so this is a mass of 10 kg block and the other one is a 4 kg block here is a 4 kg block so they both are connected by a frictionless and massless spring right and then so next what they said so an impulse gives a velocity of 14 meter per second 40, 14 meter per second to the heavier block so the heavier block has given 14 meter per second velocity so whereas so this is still at rest this is still at rest so okay so in the direction of the lighter block towards the lighter block the velocity of the center of mass so directly apply the formula so you know that the velocity of center of mass will be equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so here only two blocks are there by m1 plus m2 right we need the velocity of center of mass right so m1 mass of the first block is 10 kg into the velocity of the first one so i am considering so the right side direction as positive and opposite to that negative so m1 is 10 kg and v1 velocity v1 is 14 plus m2 into what is v2 0 by so what is m1 plus m2 so the 10 plus 4 so this is going to be so 140 by 14 so which is nothing but 10 meter per second is a velocity of center of mass option 3 is the correct one clear understood guys Chala. so let's move further just a minute no. 
सो लेट्स गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन सो वॉट्स क्वेश्चन से देर आर टू पार्टिकल्स ऑफ मास टू के जी एंड फोर के जी आर अप्रोचिंग टूवर्ड्स ईच अदर सो विथ एक्सेलरेशन वन मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वेर एंड टू मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वेर रेस्पेक्टिवली एंड ए स्मूथ हार्जेंटल सर्फेस सो कंसिडर दिस इज अ स्मूथ हार्जेंटल सर्फेस एंड देर आर टू ब्लॉक्स सो वन ब्लॉक इज ऑफ मास टू के जी एंड द अदर ब्लॉक इज ऑफ मास फोर के जी सो दिस इज ऑफ मास फोर के जी सो नाउ दे बोथ आर accelerating towards each other so if it is moving with an acceleration 1 meter per second square so the second one is accelerating 2 meter per second square so this side so towards each other see here towards each other so on a smooth horizontal surface so then find the acceleration of center of mass simple question again so we have to find the acm so you know that acm will be equals to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 the sign convention is important guys by m1 plus m2 right so now what i am doing is so let me take so this side acceleration as positive this direction i am taking it as positive so then i can write here m1 mass m1 is 2 kg into its acceleration is 1 so right side direction positive m2 mass 4 kg into so its acceleration minus 2 so why minus 2 sir because it is towards left right by m1 plus m2 so what is the mass m1 2 plus m2 4 so this comes out to be 2 minus 8 4 into 2 8 by 6 so which comes out to be so minus uh, 6 by 6 so which is minus 1 uh, meter per second square so the acceleration the net acceleration is so minus 1 meter per second square just take the magnitude so in the options they gave only magnitude so take 1 meter per second square so this minus indicates the net acceleration is the center of mass acceleration is this side so this negative sign indicates that so the the center of mass acceleration is this side clear because this direction we considered as first understood chalo so let's take the next question so try try to solve the question guys read the question first in the arrangement shown in figure ma is 2 kg so mass of the a block is this is of 2 kg block and then so mass of the b block is 1 kg mass of the b block is 1 kg so the string is light and inextensible so find the acceleration of center of mass of both the block so you have to find the acceleration of center of mass of both the blocks neglect the friction everywhere so see here we have to find acm right so the acceleration of center of mass of both the blocks acm we have to find so you know that the mass of the block a into acceleration of the block a plus mass of the block b into acceleration of the block b by the m1 plus m2 so this is going to be the acceleration of center of mass but the thing is we don't know the accelerations of these two so now we in the newton's laws of motion we already how to we already know how to find the acceleration of this simple pulley equations right so here this is 2 kg obviously this acceleration of a will be downward and acceleration of b will be upward so how do you find the acceleration of each one so the net acceleration is equals to so the net force by the net mass the net force by the net mass so what is the net force so 2g this side minus so this side the 2g will act downward and here 1g will act downward so 2g minus 1g by so what is the total mass 2 plus 1 m1 plus m2 net force by net mass right so this is going to be 2g minus 1g is g by 3 so that means the acceleration of block a is g by 3 downwards whereas acceleration of block b is g by 3 upwards so now what i am considering is so let's consider so the upward direction as positive and downward direction as negative okay so then acceleration of center of mass will be equals to so mass of the a block is 2 kg into so acceleration of a so as it is downward so i am taking it as minus g by 3 plus mass of the block b 1 kg into acceleration of block b it is upward so with g by 3 so that's why i am taking 
plus g by 3. Take care of the sign conventions. By so the net mass, what is the net mass? m1 plus m2, which is 2 plus 1. So this is going to be minus 2g by 3 plus g by 3. So by 3. So which comes out to be this is uh, minus 2g plus g minus g by so 3 into 3 9 so which is nothing but so minus g by 9 so what what this minus indicates so g by 9 downward so it g by 9 downward so because we considered upward direction as positive so here we got the acceleration of the center of mass is minus so that which indicates g by 9 downward direction so g by 9 downwards option 4 is the correct one clear guys understood the concept Chal. so now so if the center of mass is stationary so you know that so the position of center of mass is equals to so for system of two particles let me consider only for the system of two particles so m1 r1 plus m2 r2 by m1 plus m2 by m1 plus m2 so this is the sister uh, position of center of mass right so now so if center of mass is stationary so if the center of mass is stationary means its velocity is zero yes or no so now what i am doing is so let's differentiate it on either side differentiate on both the sides partial differentiation we do okay so then the drcm so which is equals to m1 dr1 plus m2 into mass is constant i am writing dr2 differentiating so by m1 plus m2 so these two are constants right so this part is clear so now if center of mass is stationary if the center of mass is stationary so shall I say that the drcm will become zero? What is the drcm? So the position of the change in position of the center of mass. So drcm is nothing but it's a position of change in center of mass. It's a change in position of center of mass. Change in position of center of mass. So if the center of mass is stationary, its position will not change, right? So that's why drcm will become 0. So 0 into m1 plus m2 will become 0, which means I can write m1 dr1 plus m2 dr2 will become 0, right? So in place of this, so in the x direction, let's suppose if it is moving in the x direction, we can take m1 x1 plus, so the small displacement in the x direction is x1. So the small displacement in the x direction that is x2 so let it be equals to 0 so thus that means if the center of mass is stationary so then you can simply consider m1 x1 plus m2 x2 is equals to 0 so when to apply this condition if center of mass is stationary if center of mass is stationary clear understood guys still here Chha. so let's move further let's move further so let's take the simple question so by what distance 20 kg mass should be moved to keep center of mass stationary see here so to keep center of mass stationary understand the question so by what distance 20 kg mass to be moved so here 10 kg block is there and 20 kg block is there so 10 kg block is moved by 2 centimeters towards the right so that its center of mass will be moved to the right so that the 20 kg block should be moved to this uh, to this side yes or no so that 20 kg block should be moved to this side so as the center of mass is stationary shall i <laughs> sorry <coughs> so if the center of mass is stationary so shall i say that so the m1 x1 plus the m2 x2 will be equals to 0 m1 x1 plus m2 x2 will be equals to 0 so from here the mass of the first one is 10 into 
so i am considering this side direction as positive and left side direction as negative so 10 into so the 10 kg block is moving towards right so into 2 so plus m2 so the second block mass is 20 kg into so it is moving towards the left so that's why i am writing minus x is equals to 0 yes or no so then so 10 into 2 20 so is equals to minus 20 uh, sorry minus 20 x if it goes that side it will become 20 x so therefore x is equals to 1 centimeter so 1 centimeter which side so 1 centimeter to the right or to the left so it is to the left because when you move the 10 kg block to the right side to the right side so its center of mass moves right, uh, right side so to keep the center of mass stationary that means to bring back to its original position so this 20 kg block should move this side see if you don't know the direction so what you can do is simply simply so the second block 20 kg block the method 2 i am doing you don't know what is the uh, displaced like uh, to which direction it has to be moved either this side or this side you don't know so let the 20 kg block has to be moved by the distance x so let the 20 kg block has to be moved some x distance which direction we don't know okay so in that case what we apply the formula same formula you can apply m1 x1 plus m2 x2 equals to 0 m1 is 10 x1 is 2 so m2 is 20 x2 is x is equals to 0 so just substitute the values okay so here 20 is equals to minus 20 x from here x is equals you are getting minus 1 centimeter so you considered so the right side direction is positive so that's why we got x is equals to minus 1 so that means it has to be moved 1 centimeters to the left so to the left so here like that also you can proceed okay or else if you know the concept so you can simply say that as the 10 kg block is moving right side so the center of mass is moving right side so to keep it stationary stationary means to bring back to its original position the 20 kg block has to be moved to the left clear guys understood sure now so let's go for the next question consider a system of two particles having masses m1 and m2 okay so if the particle of mass m1 is pushed towards the center of mass of particles through a distance d so by what distance would the particle of m2 move so as to keep the center of mass of the particle at the original position so we have to keep the center of mass at original position what does that mean so original position means the center of mass is stationary the center of mass is stationary right so now see here consider a mass of system of particles m1 and m2 so here is the m1 and here is the m2 fine so now if the particle of m1 is pushed towards the center of part center of mass of particles through a distance d so let this distance be d okay so by what distance so the m2 be moved so to keep as a center of mass stationary same concept same question see here let the total distance be some x let the total distance be some x so now it is moved towards it is moved towards uh, this side some d distance so now it should be moved to this side to keep the center of mass stationary so the m2 block should be moved to the left <coughs> <coughs> just a minute guys <coughs> sorry guys sorry so so what what's the question ah so if it is moved by the distance d so this has to be moved by the distance x this has to be moved by the distance let's suppose some x distance it has to be moved to this side so again same concept you can apply so the center of mass is stationary so which is nothing but so the m1 into so the d so let's take the right side direction as positive so m1 into d plus m2 into so the minus x why it is moving to the left side must be equals to 0 so then i can write so m1 d is equals to m2 into 
x right so what do we require we require so how much distance the second particle has to be moved so that is x we required which is m1 by m2 into d so m1 by m2 into d so option 3 is a correct one clear guys understood Chal. simple question so now so let's come to the important concept so what is the force on center of mass see let's suppose we have a system so this is a system so this is a system where this is of the mass m1 so mass m2 so mass m3 and then so mass m4 so like that there are so some m n masses are there okay so then let the total system mass be capital m so let the total system mass be capital m so now so if you observe uh, let's suppose so there are the some forces acting on the body so let's suppose there are some forces acting on the body so see some force acting on the block m1 so some force acting on the block m2 some force acting on the block m3 so f1 force f2 force so f3 force so then what is the net force acting on the block we know that the so velocity of center of mass or the acceleration of center of mass is equals to so i can write m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 so till m n a n till m n a n right by so m1 plus m2 plus m3 so till m n till m n till m n right so chal. so now let's uh, bring this part to this side so the m1 plus m2 plus m3 so till m n just try to understand the concept so till m n into a c m just i brought this part to this side okay so which is equals to so i can write m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 m3 a3 so till m n a n so till m n a n so now so this m1 plus m2 plus m3 till mn is nothing but the total net mass of the system i considered a system so where there are some masses in it some n masses in it so the whole system mass is capital m so what is this uh, m1 plus m2 plus m3 till mn so i can substitute the capital m so the capital m into the a center of mass will be equals to so m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 so till mn a n till mn a n so now see here so the m into a c m which is nothing but so the net force on the system so this is a net force on the system yes or no m into a c m so the total mass into its acceleration of center of mass so its acceleration of center of mass so which is nothing but so the net force acting on the body which is equals to so m1 a1 m1 is m1 a1 means the net force acting on the particle 1 plus so the net force acting on the particle 2 plus the net force acting on the particle 3 so like that so the net force act the net force acting on the particle n okay so this is the net force acting on the particles clear till here now so now let's understand some important conclusions here so some important points so what are they so we have got so the f net is equals to so f1 plus f2 plus f3 so what is this f net the net external force acting on the body so till fn right so now if the net external force is zero if the net external force acting on the body is zero so it does not mean that it does not mean that f1 is equals to 0 
f2 is equals to 0 and till fn is equals to 0. So it need not to be because the overall force acting on the system is 0. But so still on the individual particle the force may exist. Let's suppose. So consider this is a system. So where so we are I have two part three particles let's suppose this is m1 m2 m3 on this some 10 newtons force is acting on this some 8 newtons force is acting on this some 2 newtons force is acting here I could say that the net force acting on the system is 0 because 10 newtons is left side and 10 newtons is right side 8 plus 2 10 newtons right side but the overall force acting on the system is 0 but the individual particles are still experiencing the force yes or no so this is experiencing a force of 10 newtons the particle 1 so the particle 2 is experiencing a force of 8 newtons the particle 3 is experiencing a force of 2 newtons so if the net force acting on the body is zero it does not mean that the individual particles forces is also zero no okay so this is the first point right so and then so if the net force or the net external force acting on the body is zero acting on the body is zero so then i can say that if the net force is zero so we can say that so its center of mass will become zero so its acceleration of center of mass will, will become zero so it does not mean that it does not mean that the a1 is equals to zero a2 is equals to zero so till a n is equals to zero till a n is equals to zero so that means so the overall systems acceleration is zero its center of mass acceleration is zero but still as a force is acting on the individual particles so they may experience the acceleration force is uh, experiencing force is acting so they may experience acceleration understanding they may have acceleration so the individual particles acceleration may or may not be equals to zero clear understood so and so one more important point so if the f net acting on the body is zero right so then acm will be equals to zero the acceleration of the center of mass may be zero right then so i can say that its velocity of center of mass is going to be constant its velocity of center of mass should be constant its velocity of center of mass is constant it does not mean that v1 constant v2 constant v3 constant so but overall system center of mass velocity is going to be constant so this point is very very important guys okay so if the net force is acting on the body is zero so its center of mass acceleration will be acceleration of the center of mass will be zero and its velocity of center of mass will be constant vcm is constant so if vcm is constant we can say that so the v initial will be equals to the v final v initial of the center of mass will be equals to v final of the center of mass clear understood the concept everyone shall so note this point so just again let me explain once so this is a whole system it consists of some masses so the whole system mass is capital m you are applying some external force the f net so and there are some internal uh, forces that are acting f1 f2 f3 like that okay so if the net force acting on the body is zero means so the individual forces acting on the particles may not be equals to zero okay and if the net force acting on the body is zero so that means acceleration of the whole system is zero that center of mass is zero but it does not mean that individual particles acceleration is also zero no okay and if acceleration of center of mass is zero so its velocity of center of mass should be constant right because the acm is what so the acm is so the d by dt of vcm d by dt of vcm so this will be constant so whenever so this will be zero whenever vcm is constant so the differentiation of the constant term is only zero right so vcm will be constant then only acm will be zero understood guys clear this part shall now let's move further so let's take one simple question so what's the question says see here answer the following in s yes or no or maybe if f net acting on the system is zero so its center of mass is at rest see its center of mass may be at rest so its center of mass may be at rest it velocity may be constant right see the velocity if f net is zero 
if f net is zero so the acm will be equals to zero acceleration of the center of mass is equals to zero and then so it's uh, <laughs> vcm is going to be constant so if the vcm is constant means so it is equals to either zero or it may be at rest zero or it may be at rest we can't say right so next if f net on system is zero then center of mass is moving so maybe or may not be yes sir so i can write here maybe why because so it is going to be constant zero is also a constant or some other velocity is also a constant right understanding so that's why so center of mass is moving maybe it may move with some constant velocity or it may uh, be at rest zero understanding so if f net on the system is zero so then velocity of the center of mass is must be constant yes so here you can write the statement yes clear guys understood everyone chal so let's move further so let's take the seventh question what's the question says if the external force <laughs> sorry so if the external forces acting on the system is zero so f net acting on the system is zero then the center of mass must not move must not accelerate so may move may accelerate so see so it must not accelerate right so its acceleration of the center of mass should be zero so then so the acm should be zero <coughs> yes or no so it's acceler sorry guys let's um, just a minute its acceleration must be equals to zero so that means it must not accelerate then clear chal let's go for the next question so what's the question says see here a solid sphere of radius r is placed on a smooth horizontal surface a horizontal force f is applied at a height h from the lowest point so a horizontal a solid sphere so this is a solid sphere so consider this is a sphere a solid sphere so then a force f is applied at a height h from the lowest point so here let's suppose some force f is applied at a height h from the lowest point so then for maximum acceleration of the center of mass so which is correct for the x see h where it should apply i did not explain any relation between h and r right so there is no relation between h and r so depending on the force application you can't decide what is its acceleration of center of mass maximum acceleration of center of mass so there is no relation between h and r at what height if you apply the force so that its center of mass acceleration will be maximum we can't say there is no relation between h and r okay so remember this statement then so now so let's go for the next one so if the center of mass is at rest if the center of mass is at rest and no external force is acting if f net acting on the body is zero you know that the acm will be equals to zero so the acceleration of center of mass will be equals to zero so if the acceleration of center of mass is zero so then the vcm is going to be constant the vcm is going to be constant so if initially center of mass is at rest so that means the initial center of mass the initial velocity of the center of mass is at rest so then velocity of the center of mass should remain constant so there therefore so the final velocity also should be equals to zero i can say if initial velocity is zero so the final also should be equals to zero right so that means so i can write so the m1 x1 plus if the center of mass is stationary rest means stationary m2 x2 is equals to zero this condition you can apply guys again the same condition if initially it is at rest so the finally also it's going to be at rest so we'll solve question so that you'll understand even better so take take this question so try to read the question and uh, understand try to read this question and understand fast
quickly. Simple, there are three parts of the question. Two particles of 2m and 3m are placed at a separation D. Fine. On a smooth surface, so they move towards each other due to the mutual, uh, mutual attractive force. There is no external force. Okay. So only due to the mutual inter interactive forces. Find the acceleration of the center of mass. The first question I can write. So there is no external force. So the F external on the system is zero. So then the acceleration of the center of mass will obvious be, obviously will be equals to zero. So the first question is done. Right. And the second question. So what is the velocity of center of mass when separation between the particles uh, becomes d by 3? So what is the velocity of center of mass, right? So what is the velocity of center of mass? So when the separation between the particles becomes d by 3. So the second question B part. So if the velocity of center of mass initially at rest, yes or no? So its velocity of center of mass initially at rest, right? So after some separation also, so the velocity of its center of mass will become zero, I can say. After some separation also, its velocity of center of mass will become zero. Final also will become zero. So the second question also done. And then come to the third question. So let's do the third question in the next slide. So let's do the third C part. Because they are moving towards each other due to the mutual attractive force. So that means initially they are at rest. So then due to the internal forces, they are moving. So if they are initially at rest, after some time also they will be at rest because the velocity of the center of mass should be zero because external force is zero, right? And then, so at what distance from the initial position of mass to M, the particles collide? So at what distance they collide? So simply use this concept. So M1 X1 plus M2 X2 will be equals to zero because their center of mass will be at rest. So the at what distance from the initial position of mass to M. So let it be some distance X. So I can write so M1 into so if it is X distance so then this will be D minus X distance obviously. So M1 into X right side. So I am considering this side direction as positive right. So then M2 into X2 is what? So X2 I can take it as minus d minus x. So let's write minus here itself so that it makes our calculations easier. So m2 is what? So let's write m2 only into d minus x. So why I am keeping minus here? Because this side direction speed I should take it as negative. So that's why I am taking minus here. So m1 mass is 2m into x is minus m2 mass is 3m into d minus x. What we need to find? So the x distance we have to find. So then, so I can write 2m x minus 3m d minus of minus 3m x is equals to 0. From here, so 2m x plus 3m x which is 5m x minus is uh, which is equals to 3m d. So here, m m gets cancelled. So x is equals to 3 d by 5. So at a distance 3d by 5, so the two particles will collide. Clear guys? Understood? Simple concept. So let's take one more question. So what's the question says? Two particles which are initially at rest move towards each other under the action of internal attraction. Only internal forces. There is no external forces. If their speeds are v and 2v at any instant, so the speed of the center of mass. See here. There is no external force. So the f external is equals to zero then ACM should be equals to 0. So if ACM is equals to 0, so then the VCM should be constant. The VCM should be constant. So in the question, if you observe what they are asking, at any then the speed of center of mass of the system. So what is the speed of center of mass of the system? So initially they are at rest. So then at any point, so their center of mass will be at rest itself 0. Yes or no? Because the velocity of center of mass is equal to 0. So the v initial of the center of mass is 0. So therefore, the v final of the center of mass will also be 0. So option 2. Direct question. Logical question. Clear guys? Chal. So let's try to understand this question. So what's the question says? Two spherical bodies of mass m and phi m are 
radiate r and 2r released in free space with initial separation between the two centers is 12r so if they attract each other due to the gravitational force only that means there is no external force so that then the distance covered by the smaller body before collision so try to understand this concept guys so here so there is m mass body and one more so 5m mass body so these are the two masses so this is of mass m and whose radius is r and then <laughs> so this is of radius 2r and then whose mass is 5m fine right so they are released in the free space with the initial separation between their center center to center distance is 12r center to center distance is 12r from here to here the distance is 12r so if they attract each other due to gravitational force that means so the f external acting on the body is zero so then we can say that the acceleration of center of mass is zero and velocity of center of mass is going to be constant right so now see after then the distance covered by the smaller body before collision how much distance the smaller body will cover so before collision so now what i am doing is see so to collide means so their uh, surfaces will collide what is the total distance between their surfaces the original distance is given between center to center so here r and 2r can be ex accepted while calculating the distance between them so you can ignore this r and 2r because when they collide so the actual distance between this end and this end is going to be so 2r and r if you subtract this is going to be 9r only the original separation between them is 9r so let's suppose if it is moved by some distance x so this will be moved by some distance 9r minus x yes or no so the whole distance between their end to end not to center to not from center to center to collide means their surfaces will collide right so that you have to calculate the distance between their surfaces so which is 9r so now let's suppose it is moved by some distance x so this has to be moved by some distance 9r minus x so same concept again so consider this this side direction as positive so then i can write so as center of mass is at rest so i can take m1 x1 plus m2 x2 will be equals to zero so what is m1 capital m mass x1 so x1 is x and then m2 phi m mass and x2 which is 9r minus x so i am taking this as minus why because so it is towards left so minus so zero so here i can write so this is m into x minus so this is going to be 45 9 into 5 45 m into so r so minus this is uh, minus into minus 5 m x is equals to zero so i can write 5 m x plus 6 uh, m x which is 6 m x is equals to so we have got 45 m r so what we need to find so we need actually the distance x right so here capital m capital m cancel so here uh, 3 2s are 3 uh, 15s are right so 2 x is equals to 15 r from here x we required x equals to 15 r by 2 which is nothing but x equals to 7 per decimals is there so that's why I take it as 7.5 r so x equals to 7.5 r option 3 is a correct one clear guys understood Chalo. so let's take one more question so what's the question says the balloon the light rope and the monkey shown in the figure are rest in the air so if the monkey reaches the top of the rope so by what distance the by what distance sorry sorry by what distance the balloon descend so mass of the balloon is capital m mass of the monkey is small m and length of the rope ascended by the monkey is l okay fine so the simple question again so here is the balloon and here is the rope attached to the balloon so now what monkey is doing is so monkey is holding the rope and it is ascending that rope okay so then so the balloon comes down and monkey goes up monkey as monkey ascends up so what happens the balloon comes down yes or no so now see here so what they are asking so by what distance does the balloon descend so the monkey reaches the top of the rope 
so by what distance the balloon descends so that distance we have to find so let's suppose see here so let the monkey ascends by distance x distance x so then the balloon will descend by the distance uh, l minus x so then the balloon descends by l minus x right so i am considering this direction as positive and then downward direction as negative so simply so initially they are at rest so here there is no external force is acting so there is no external force is acting so therefore acceleration of center of mass should be zero the velocity of center of mass should be constant right so that i can say that so the m1 x1 plus m2 x2 should be equals to zero so let m1 be the mass of the monkey so m into so how much distance the monkey has ascended some x distance so upside so positive plus so what is m2 so m2 m2 is the mass of the balloon into how much di uh, distance the balloon has descended l minus x so i am considering it as negative why because the downward direction take it as negative so zero so here mx so here minus ml plus mx is equals to zero so what we require so we require by how much distance the balloon descends so that means l minus x we have to find so well, first let's find the x value so we get mx is equals to sorry so the mx plus mx is equals to ml from here so if you take x common so which is going to be ml by m plus m yes or no so if you take x common m plus m so which is ml by so m plus m so ml by m plus m yes or no so ml by m plus m so that's it so that's that much distance so the monkey will descend so or else let's uh, do one thing so the let the monkey this ascends by x you take this one mm. Mm. so no problem same concept so same thing you get so x is equals to ml by m plus l clear guys understood Chal. so let's move further so we don't need another slide so let's take the next question a block of mass m is placed on the top of a bigger block of mass 10 m as shown in the figure all surfaces are frictionless so the system is released from the rest so find the distance moved by the bigger block so at the instant the smaller block reaches the ground see here so this is the 10m mass and this is the m mass okay so as this mass descends so this 10m block is moving right side so let the distance moved by the 10m block be x let the distance moved by 10m block be x so the 10m block is moving a distance x so then m block is will be here m block will be here right so then so m what is the distance moved by m block distance moved by m block so will be equals to shall i simply say so he, from here to here so this side direction is positive so this this is moving to the left actually if you consider this as a origin so it is at a distance 2.2 uh, 2. so now it is coming here so which is nothing but 2.2 minus x yes or no so 2.2 minus x yes so then so i can write so initially they are at rest all surfaces are frictionless the mass is released from the rest so there is no external force is acting so i can say that the f external is zero so therefore acm zero and then vcm constant vcm constant so therefore i can say that uh, c ah uh, yes so vcm constant means m1 x1 plus m2 x2 is equals to 0 yes so what is m1 guys so m1 is a 
mass of the block one so capital m into so or else let, let's say this one 10m block into so it is moved by the distance x so whereas small m has block has moved to the left it came from here to here right to the left so that means m2 is so m into what is the distance moved by it 2.2 .2 minus x is equals to 0 so then simple thing 10 and x is equals to so m into 2.2 .2 minus x so directly you can cancel m and m so what we require the system find the distance moved by the bigger block so what is the distance moved by the bigger block so that we consider as x okay so then 10 x is equals to 2.2 .2 minus x so which is nothing but so 11 x is equals to 2.2 .2. so which is x is equals to 2.2 .2 by 11 yes or no so this is 10 x plus this whole thing I sent it to that side yes fine correct only so this comes out to be 11 x so somewhere around 0 0.22 meters right so this if, if you can you can take approximately 10 so approximately this is going to be 0 0.22 meters clear guys <coughs> understood this concept everyone clear Done. 0 0.22 or 0. Sorry. 11, right? Directly you can cancel, right? 0. Point, this goes two times. 0. 0.2 meters, not 22, guys. This is directly 0. 0.2. So close options are there. Check check it properly. Close options are there. 0. 0.2 meters only. Yes. Clear. Chal. Next. So in the last question also, I guess we found the x. I guess x is the monkey ascents. We need the L minus X. Now we need L minus X actually. So what is L minus X? L minus ML by M plus M. M plus M. Right. So which is nothing but in place of X we substituted this. So here in the denominator we get M plus M. So and then L uh, here M plus M into L minus ML. Right. So here ML, ML gets cancelled. So we get m l small m l by small m plus capital m small m l by small m plus capital m sorry guys this is the correct answer option three so my bad very sorry because uh, we did the process correct only but the x is the distance ascended by what we considered the x so let the monkey ascends the distance x but what they asked by what distance the balloon descend so balloon descends by l minus x we calculated x so then we need l minus x so l minus x means so option 3 is the correct one clear so these questions just take care of the calculations okay understood so if you want you can consider let the monkey let the balloon descends by the distance x and the monkey ascends by l minus x so then you calculate the x value okay so in that case you will get the direct this option so we as we calculated x x is what monkey ascends by the distance x but we need we need the distance descended by the balloon so that is l minus x we required so you just subtract this one so we got ml by small ml by capital m plus small m take care of that okay so this part is also clear right so we don't need another slide here so that's it guys this is from my end so thank you so we'll meet in the next lecture so till then keep studying all the very best bye